Saludos fanáticos de la PR de Orlua. Aquí otra semana más de entrevista y hoy le tocó a Amy Rose, luchadora de Ring of Honor. Estuvo hablando con nosotros su, su experiencia dentro de la lucha libre. Estuvo hablando con nosotros de sus comienzos, sacrificios y, y todo el trabajo que tuvo que pasar para que Ring of Honor se fijara en ella. Eh, es una entrevista muy interesante, una historia de superación y creo que les va a gustar esta entrevista cuando la vean. Así que sin más preámbulos, vamos allá con Amy Rose. All right, we're recording, Amy. How are you doing today? Doing great. Thanks for having me. No, thank you for uh, for the chance to to letting me have you here on this little experiment that I'm doing here with uh, interviews for my channel. I've always been following your career at least for the past two years uh, since Ring of Honor, but I know that you are uh, you used to do a little bit of work on the independent circuit down in, in South in Florida, right? That's correct. That's pretty cool. And I've seen actually that uh, some of the people you used to work with are like, some are in NWA, some some of them are in other promotions. So it's like, it's a good breed that came out of that uh, area in Florida. Definitely. A lot of my closest friends, you can see some of them NWA, like you said. I have good friends in NXT, AEW. So we, we have friends everywhere and I got to train with a lot of those people. So it was really cool. That's pretty awesome. Um, The wrestling business is pretty uh, fascinating in that sense because sometimes I I've been in the wrestling business now 14 years, maybe 15, I guess. And uh, I've known people, for example, in WWE, that probably nobody will believe I've, I've been in the ring with them. Wow. Uh, I've, I've trained with people, you know, and it's like that. You, you cross your path with people that are going to be in different promotions when you're in the wrestling business. I got an interview today with a guy that uh, he is right now in the Performance Center doing stuff with WWE and it was a guy who used to go to the fairgrounds with him and uh, the carnivals with him in Puerto Rico. So, oh, that's cool. So it's, uh, it's a small world in the wrestling business, ain't it? It is. It's a very small world and you never know who's going to make it. So my personal advice is be nice to everybody. <laughs> oh, yeah. Always, always be treat everybody with dignity Definitely. you know regardless and, and in this times man it's it's the least you can do man treat people good 100%. so there's a couple of things i want to talk to you uh and i'm going to try to keep this like 45 minutes i don't i'm not trying to have you here all day long i know you're playing pokemon and i might have interrupted your game today <laughs> don't worry about it <laughs> so and we're going to talk about that because I, I do a little bit of gaming, but not like you. What was your first memory of wrestling growing up? Um, so my personal first memory of wrestling was uh, watching SmackDown. Um, okay. I, I grew up in a pretty religious family. And okay. I go to church about three times a week. So it was a lot. And especially as a little kid, that's like the last thing you want to do. Especially, you know, it's bad enough going one day, but I think going three days is like really tough. Um, and so one time, I think I, you know, might have said I was sick or something, but I, uh, I stayed home and my family was gone and I was flipping through the channels and SmackDown came on and, uh, it just captivated me. It caught my attention. The first people that I saw were the Hardy Boys and Lita. Wow. So we're probably talking early 2000s. Yeah, for sure. Okay. Yeah. I, uh. Yeah, I I do remember the first time you know that I that the bug came and bit me too. So I I I can relate to whatever you felt that day. So ever since you've been uh, a fan. Well, so watching that, I uh, I started with Hardy Boys and Lita, and I wanted to be the fourth member of Team Extreme. Like my thing, I wanted so badly to be Jeff Hardy's girlfriend, and and so <laughs> um, watching wrestling, I saw the deep and those women really inspired me they they to me they were the sexiest women on the planet but they were also really strong getting in there and wrestling and um it inspired me and as a little kid i remember being like really young i think i had to be like six or seven and i was like i want to be a wwe diva that's my dream and uh and that's what that's what started my journey towards wrestling you're the diamond diva nowadays Definitely. so You're there. 
Uh, mm -hmm. Something that people don't realize is how tough can being a wrestler be. Uh, you, you have to look good, you have to train, and you have to repeat the next day. And it's, uh, I'm, I'm assuming you've been doing this for like five years, six years now? About five years, going on six. I've always tell people that it takes a very special human being to be a pro wrestler because it's the training is excruciating. I've, I've done wrestling for a minute ever since I was like 16 years old. And uh, my hat to you guys, you do tours, I'm guessing, yes. with Ring of Honor. Mm -hmm. And you always got to put your good face when it comes to doing it. What's your, uh, when did you start it? wrestling like when was the first time you stepped foot in, in the ring for training so um my first experience with wrestling it's really uh kind of funny but video games actually kind of led me towards my career uh because i was in i'm from miami and uh they had a comic book convention okay and, uh, i remember i went to the thing and i was dressed as a, uh, my favorite wrestler at the time and uh you know i was just like a fan having a good time and at the show, there was wrestlers dressed as superheroes. Okay. So I was watching the show, and it's actually a Puerto Rican wrestler that, uh, you know, kind of made everything click for me. Uh, okay. John Cruz, he's been on AEW a Dark recently. Surpassed. What was his name? Uh, John Cruz. Okay. And so uh, he, he came on, and he just killed it. He did so good, and I remember watching and being like, okay, if these people can go out there and do this, then what am I waiting for? Right. And uh, and right after the show, they had asked us, hey, does anyone have questions, anything they want to know about wrestling? And my first question was, how do I get into this? How do I, how do I join wrestling? And uh, there was a promotion down in Florida, and they just happened to be starting. It was called Ronin Pro Wrestling. And they were like, we might need an interviewer if you want to come in and see how it is, give it a shot. And, uh, and I'm guessing you just wanted to get your feet wet. Yeah, I'll take anything you give me. I had no idea what I was really doing, but I was just like, I want to try this. Like, I want to give it a shot. And, That's pretty uh, awesome. It was, it was amazing. And that promotion in particular was cool because they brought in all these big stars and people that I had grown up watching. Um, and it was really, it was insane. Because, like, I actually, I met people like Sasha Banks on my first show. Oh, my God. I met Tommy Dreamer. I met Al Snow. Al Snow was my first interview I ever did. Wow. <laughs> so that's the beauty of professional wrestling. Um, I trained with a guy when I was 17 years old that I've been watching my whole life. And he was a, a hero in Puerto Rico. Um, and then all of a sudden, here I am in the ring with him. He's training me. And uh, his partner, before he, when he first got to Puerto Rico, he's from Canada. When he came to Puerto Rico, his partner, tag team partner, made it to WWE, WWF at the time, yeah. became Bob Venus. Oh, wow. So, but this local guy, he's, he lives in Florida now. His name is Shane Soul, Shane the Glamour Boy. And it's just like you just pointed right there, you met a ton of people that you probably couldn't believe, like, oh, oh I, yeah. I'm here with such and such and such, and I got to keep it cool because, you know, I'm now one of them, so... That's uh, that was my place, and uh, doing independence down in South Florida. I started working as interviewer, manager, things like that. Um, and then I noticed the people that impressed me the most all came from a certain school. Okay. Um, which was Team 3D Academy. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's based out in Kissimmee, which is uh, up north, close yeah. to Orlando. A lot of Puerto Rican people live yep. in so big community out there. And, uh, and so I, I said, all right, I got to do this. I got to go. Like, I want to get better. I want to learn what I'm actually doing. Because, you know, what I was doing was just me trying stuff out. I wasn't trained properly. Mm -hmm. And so that was my first experience getting into the ring and, and going for real school. So you you were driving all the way to Kissimmee from Miami? Um, I made the move. Okay. So you, this is not the first time then that you move to pursue your, your wrestling uh, journey. Nope. And uh, I would say anyone aspiring to get a career in wrestling, you have to make sacrifices. You have to make moves. Definitely. Yes. So 
where you work. You're definitely a go-getter. Oh, 100, yeah. Because <laughs> I've heard a little bit about your story and your interview with Joe Hendry, Joe Hendry, who I think is the coolest dude probably on Ring of Honor. Awesome. He is awesome. Uh, you, you were saying that um, you went to a show and you knock on the door and say, hey, I'm here. Uh, and, and you kept probably knocking on the door until they told you, you know, come on board. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So that's something that I, I want to, uh, for the people that might be on their like, beginning their journey, probably they just started training or want to get their feet wet. What type of sacrifices have you made so far in your career? Uh, what does your family think about your career? What's the feedback on that? Um, you know, I think obviously just making the move from Miami to Kissimmee was huge for me because I've lived in Miami my whole life and I didn't know anything else. Uh, and it was funny because when I first moved there, I hated it. I, I thought I miss Miami so much. Um, it was just, it was very different atmosphere. And Miami was, I was a little bit of a partier. So Miami, you could stay out a little later and you could, uh, you could do a lot more fun things and go to the beach where over there, everything closed at like super early. I had to do it. Like, oh yeah. And, um, and I remember I was just like very not happy at first, but once I started getting into the groove with wrestling and traveling and going to more shows, that's when it kind of, none of that other stuff mattered to me anymore. And uh, I would say that alone is a sacrifice because a lot of the time uh, people are too afraid to maybe go to a show that they're not necessarily booked on or to go connect with people. Sometimes I would go to places out of state, really far away that I was not on the show. And uh, it was just for an opportunity to meet the promoter. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I do nothing. Sometimes I would help out, do ring crew, help out, ring the bell at the show. Maybe sometimes they throw me something, hey, we need an interviewer, we need a ring announcer. So, you know, any opportunity that I could get, I would take it. And I did that a lot in my, in my early days. I, uh, I traveled to so many shows, I couldn't even tell you. You know, uh, back in Puerto Rico, when I was a little bit younger, um, my brother-in-law used to wrestle for IWA back in Puerto Rico, and there was this show that I used to run with the guys probably to every show, and Miguel Perez from IWA, they had ju we just finished putting the ring, and he grabbed the broom and he said, can somebody sweep the, the ring, because it's a little dirty, nobody, everybody like stepped away, I said, I'll do it, I'll do it, next week I was a referee in the company, so you always have to take, and this is for everybody out there, you have to take whatever chance you, whatever time they give you the ball roll with it and play because the worst can happen is it you don't make it but hey if you make it hey exactly that's exactly how i look at wrestling and that's how i look at life you know i personally i'd rather try and fail than never know and i think a lot of people are kind of afraid to do that but i i just kind of go for it i take chances and the worst thing that can happen is it doesn't work out that mm -hmm. looks like I would you uh, see it? Would you rather have a little bit of success or no success? Oh, so, yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean. So you've been training now for five years. Uh, Ring of Honor. Uh, you said, you know what? I'm gonna grab my stuff and go to the show. What was that show again that you went and and uh, you made the investment? Definitely. So uh, it was a show in New York City. It was Final Battle. Okay. And, uh, again, I didn't really go too far out of Florida. Maybe I think the furthest I went was like North Carolina for a show or something like that. And uh, it was their huge end of the year pay-per-view. And something I just said to myself, I got to make an impression. I got to go there. I got to show them that I really want to work here. Um, and I, I, I took a flight. I threw myself out there. I showed up early that morning, helped out with ring crew. Um, and it's crazy because that same day, so many people came to help out, like in the local area, that they actually sent people home. Wow. And originally they were trying to send me home. And I was devastated. I was like, oh God, I just came all the way out here. And, uh, and it's funny because uh, someone that I work with now and someone who I trained with at the dojo, Brian Johnson, I don't know. Okay. If he, uh, he actually pulled me aside and said, wait, come with me, 
And he helped me stay, and, and I got to stay and help out. And next thing I knew, I was ringing the bell for the show. And wow. I, I left an impression on the right people, for sure. You know, uh, I did a little bit, a little bit, a little bit of work with MCW uh, about 2015. Uh, and it was just like that. I said to Dan, hey, Dan, I think I could do X, Y, Z here. I said, really? Okay, come on. You come in the next show, and, and you'll work with us. Many things happened in my personal life that I had to drop the ball, but hey, it was a hell of an experience. And I met that little success that I took from that experience led, led to me talking to you today, if, yeah. if you want to put it that way. So, again, if anybody watches this video, I don't know who you are. I don't know where are you. Take this to the heart. Do everything in your power. And don't listen to people telling you why you can't do it. Just find a reason to do it and look at you this, you're the living example of that exactly 100 percent. and i agree with you like uh, i think a majority of my career i was told i couldn't i never would i would never make it never do anything and you know a lot of people definitely underestimated me they didn't think i was tough enough to to survive in the world of pro wrestling but i proved those people wrong tell me about this passion you have for video games what's your favorite all-time video game Definitely. Uh, like you said earlier, you, you interrupted me playing Pokemon, which is the first real video game that I didn't care. I had an older brother, and uh, he was the one that actually got me into video games. And I remember being a little kid, he uh, came and he brought me, he had Pokemon Blue and Pokemon Red. And he took Red and gave me Blue, and that's where everything started for me. And you know, I was upset. You are Cuban, right? Yes. Um, how was life, uh, Cuban? How was the, the Cuban side of you? Because I never see that too much on your um, on on social media. Did you get to like share it a lot? You know, the Cuban side with your family. Oh, for sure. You know, in Miami, like I'd say a good. I go ninety nine percent of people. Yeah. <laughs> it's it's almost everyone is Cuban. Mm -hmm. uh, and the. A lot of my jobs, I worked in very heavily Cuban areas, like uh, and there's a city down there called Hialeah. Yeah. And almost everyone in that city is, is Cuban. So that's a, that's a part of my family and my life that I'm really... Honestly, one of the toughest things about living far away from home is the food. I miss it so much. Girl. <laughs> Plays when it comes to being Hispanic from the Caribbean and looking for food, you will not find it. No, it's not out here. You will have to go to like Lancaster or somewhere in Pennsylvania to get fed properly as a Cuban or Puerto Rican. 100%. So, you know, that was a big part of it. My my Cuban heritage comes from that. And, uh, and I'm actually really familiar with Puerto Rican heritage because I lived in Kissimmee for several years, about three years I lived out there. And everyone, Puerto Rican in like. Yeah, we uh, we had like an internal joke amongst Puerto Ricans. Like that's another town of Puerto Rico. It's just like outside of the island. Yeah, for sure. me. I lived in Orlando for about nine months. Um, my life wasn't like we were doing like a little reconstruction of my life, and I ended up in Orlando. Not the best time of my life, but I did live there. Um, almost started training with uh, the Team 3D Academy oh. back then too. Um, and yeah, it's nothing but Puerto Ricans there. And, um, you could actually go to like a local Walmart and hear some mother yelling in Puerto Rican. For sure. Yeah. <laughs> so how, how are your parents with your whole wrestling career? Because now it's inevitable, you know, Amy's in TV and she made it. Yeah. How are they? I think for my mom, it's still very difficult just because she doesn't particularly like wrestling. Um, and especially to see me doing any kind of physicality or, or wrestling still terrifies her. But she's very proud of me. She's been extremely supportive of me my entire career. You know, as much as she doesn't like to see me get hurt or do anything physical, she loves that I'm out here pursuing my dreams and, and making things happen. You know, if it was up to my mom, uh, I would still be a backstage interviewer. Uh, but, you know, like, everything happens for a reason. 
And I'm really happy with everything that's going on with my career. And I'm thankful that I have their support. And it's, uh, it's sad that not a lot of people or, or, or a lot of people will not go through life and experience what they really love to do. And you're actually living that right now. Definitely. And, and if anything, that's that's the one message I would like to get across to people is not even just in wrestling, but anything that you have a passion for. If you put enough work into it and you try your hardest, you can make almost anything happen. You just really have to believe in yourself and you have to take shots sometimes. You were working at the end of last year. You started with the Ingobernables. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, I'm guessing because of COVID, everything is on hold, but... I'm, I'm, I follow a little bit, you know, of Ring of Honor and everything and all the companies. That's a pretty big deal. You know, I, I, I think that Rush and all that group, they're pretty good competitors. And if you ask me, their best matches are still way ahead of them. For sure. And uh, how do you feel knowing that, hey, maybe you don't have the most years under your belt, but you are on a hell of a learning curve right now? with them how do you feel about you know having that chance oh i'm so thankful for the opportunity you know everything just kind of worked out and uh if you would have told me maybe a year ago that i'd be where i am today i probably wouldn't believe it um you know i'm Rush's champion right now driving league is also a champion i've been working with kenny king very closely and uh, i've learned so much just by being around them they're incredible competitors And like you said, we have so much left. You know, once Ring of Honor gets back in action, it's only up. And I'm super excited. We have some surprises in store for the Ring of Honor fans. For sure. And it's the only company that pretty much has stopped. And I'm, I bet you that as soon as those doors open, it's going to be a packed house because I really want to see what's coming. There's a lot of people there that I'm, that I'm looking forward to see work, especially in the dojo. I got a couple of friends there, you know, like Dante, uh, Rayo. I want to see what they come up with. Um, I was just recently talking with Maria Manic. Uh, okay. Yeah, uh, I, I really want to see what's, you know, because she was also on, on that. Um, she was riding up. Oh, my God. Yeah. And oh. it's a couple of you. It's a couple of you that I'm, I've been keeping my eye because it's like I told you, you came up all the way from the south, you did your independent shows. You came in, you got the ball, you scored, you got the ball, you scored, and you keep doing it and doing it and doing it. So that's pretty awesome. What's, what's your vision? Like, what would you like to accomplish uh, in Ring of Honor right now? Um, for Ring of Honor, I think just taking La Facción and Granada to the highest extremes that we can go and, and getting some gold on Kenny King as well. I think that would be a huge accomplishment. And I'm honestly, I'm excited because I know that there's going to be a lot of new faces when we come back. I know that there's going to be some surprises coming in, and I'm excited for some new competition. I'm excited to see who who's next on our list, you know, and I want to keep taking over. I want to see us dominate everything. And also, I think for me personally, uh, I'd like my shot at, at competing in the Women of Honor division. And I know we're going to have a new championship soon. We had a tournament that was supposed to happen. And so that's something I personally would love to be a part of and take a shot at. Show people what I've been working on at that dojo. And I bet you that that agenda book is going to be way full once everything starts because just like you said, there was a tournament and you know that everything's going to start happening one thing after the other. Okay. Uh, Future of Honor, Ring of Honor, and, I'm, and I know that you're in both. You do the tapings for Ring of Honor, but you also work in Future of Honor because I, I know you work that uh at the mcw arena back yeah. in december mm -hmm. i was there taking pictures um that was actually the first time i was able to see you live oh, that's awesome. uh uh what's just you know close is i usually when i when they got shows here i go with dante and rayo um and we go for dinner after the show um i don't know if you know but i do have a wrestling promotion in puerto rico and you were gonna get booked you were you yeah. were I believe Don, uh, Dante and Ryo had told me about yeah. it. Yeah. And unfortunately, everything that happened. So I do thank you for the opportunity, and I'm so sad I didn't get the chance to meet everybody. Listen, listen. 
it's only a matter of time. I keep telling people, I got this girl. She's Cuban. When you see her. <laughs> so be ready because what we got on stake uh, for Puerto Rico is pretty interesting. So hopefully we can do great things for, for the wrestling community there. Definitely. Right now I got a... Uh, I got an interview with this guy called Angel Fashion. He's a top prospect in Puerto Rico. Definitely. I know him from Orlando. You know him? Yeah, I've met him a couple of times, and he's really close friends with my friend Lacey. Uh, Lacey. Yeah, 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 yeah. They're always like on TikTok and, and uh, Instagram. Yeah, that's so, one of my close friends from 3D, actually. So I'm going to tell, tell you this. Me and Angel, we, we used to be referees. He used to be referee for Carlos Colon. I used to be referee for Savio Vega and Miguel Perez and IWA at the same time. We were both young. My sister is pretty close with Angel, and my ex-girlfriend used to be super close with him. And that's I've known this guy from, from the beginning. This guy has come from, talk about coming from the bottom, that's him. And I couldn't be any more prouder of him. Um, and I also got an interview tonight with La Rosa Negra. You know who she is? Oh, yeah, yeah, I know her again. Yeah. I actually met her in South Florida when I first, first started, like, super long time ago. She was one of the first people I ever met in wrestling. So, I, she's super cool. I, Amazing. like, in, in Puerto Rico, I used to see her, you know, backstage with the guys, and she's so cool. My sister, my sister has always been into wrestling with me. Uh, she lives in Florida now, actually. And uh, anytime I need a favor, to need to meet somebody... I call my sister, and if I don't know that person, my sister probably knows that person, and that's how, how I always know a guy that knows a guy, and this is how I get my interviews. This is how I got to talk to Amy Rose. <laughs> that's really cool. So, Amy, we're going to be approaching the 30-minute mark here. Um, tell me a little bit of what are you doing to stay you know, on track with this whole pandemic craziness is going in the world first it was just the covid now it's just all this craziness uh, did you hear the china and india were like taking shots at each other so i did see a little bit of that and you know you see the scary stuff on twitter trending and it's like Ugh, it's a little stressful um but you know like for me it's the same with wrestling as it is in my real life i just try to keep a positive mind and, you know, I pray for the best. I pray that, you know, things things get better. And I know that, I believe that they will get better, you know. And that's that's all I can really do. I just uh, keep myself busy playing video games, working out. And, you know, just none of the days so I can get back to, to what I was doing. Get back hey, to real How far do you live from Middle River? Um, to be honest with you, I'm not really sure. <laughs> how far do you live from the MCW arena? I'd say maybe about 40 minutes. All right, so you live about 30 minutes from Middle River. If you ever want to train at a nice gym, at a super-duper nice gym, my good friend owns a gym there in Middle River, and I did get MCW guys uh, passes there for free for, like, forever. That's awesome. Uh, you can go train there because it's, uh, it's a nice gym, and you, if you ever want to shoot anything, you can go there. Thank you. I really appreciate that. I always give all, all the wrestlers the hookup with it because I do work with the owner. We're like friends. Yeah, of course. Um, so, video games. Video, I want to talk video games. Do you play only Nintendo? Um, no. I also have a PlayStation 4, and I've played a lot of video games throughout my entire life. So Tell me tell me you play, play GTA. Please tell me you play GTA. Well, I don't. That's like one of the few games I don't play. <laughs> I like GTA, but I just never really got into it with the ladies. I thought we could be friends, Amy. <laughs> Come on. No, but I, I do enjoy Call of Duty, uh, Battlefront. Recently, I gave it on uh, PlayStation Plus, so I've been playing a lot of that. I gotta buy my wife an Xbox for her birthday, but I gotta buy her a TV because I'm no way in hell I'm gonna let her put that thing next to my PS4. So, if she ever watches this interview, she will know about her birthday gift a surprise yeah <laughs> yeah because she likes to play halo and i don't like that thing I, i'm more of a listen i got everything i need in gta i got flying cars i got millions of dollars i get away with anything i want so and with the ps5 coming out and listen 
Listen, I've had to start making a little bucket to put money aside for it. I'm guessing you're already going to pre-order that thing. Oh, definitely. As soon as I can. <laughs> <laughs> so that, that's pretty awesome. That's pretty awesome to hear. Hopefully we can... I know I told you about the merch that I want to purchase from you. Mm-hmm. Hopefully we can meet sometime so I can, uh, you know, maybe shoot something else with you in person. Oh, um, sure. I got a studio here, like I told Dante and Ryo, I got a studio here that if you guys ever want to come in and shoot anything, yeah. like, you know, promos and stuff, Definitely. I'm more than open to, to lend it to you guys. I think we uh, cover some some good stuff for the fans. So you can get to know you a little bit more. Is there anything else you want to tell the fans, Amy? Um, I just want to say I miss you guys. I miss seeing the Honor Nation, and I really miss performing for everybody. But stay tuned because what we have coming up soon, you guys are going to love it. And I cannot wait to get back in action. And I know it's going to be awesome. I know you carry this great, beautiful aura around you, so... I know there's only good things coming up for you in the future and anything else you do in Ring of Honor. And I want to thank you for giving me the chance to be with you in this interview today. Hopefully we get to work in the future. Hopefully we cross our paths and do a lot of business together.